Hello, and welcome to Head and Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. And today's topic that we're going to get into, we're going to cover the men's 100, who I think is going to come out on top, the women's triple jump, as well as the possible Jamaican champion to come out of the 800. This is going to be an exciting day tomorrow. Almost all of the events are uh, very exciting, even if you're missing a couple of the, the top, top people. Is still very exciting. So without further ado, you're watching Head and Shoulders ATR. Don't forget to share, comment, like, subscribe. Let's scroll down here on day number two. If you missed day one, check out the recap that I had there and also check out the races. Here's the men's 100 meter final at Zurich. And for those that don't understand what the Diamond League is, real quick, this race, you're going to win a, a diamond trophy as well as $30,000. Now, it used to be a little bit higher, but uh, due to the, the shutdown, I think they based the, the number off of the previous year before. And since there was no real competitions the year before or participation or money or profits that they got, it kind of got lower by $10,000 this year. But I'm sure that'll come back. But still, $30,000 at this race, plus all the other races that they made their money, you're getting a lot of money that's coming in. Obviously, I want to see it more. That's why we're covering this, so that these athletes get uh, better known, their, their sponsors are happy, maybe you guys buy some of their products, maybe some of mine too, and everybody's happy. Here we go. Here, in lane one, we got uh, Yupin Abikun Muria Salage uh, from Sri Lanka, Rohan Browning of Australia in lane two, Mike Rogers of USA in lane three, Ronnie Baker in four, of the USA, Fred Curley of the USA in five, Andre DeGrasse of Canada in six, Trayvon Bromel of USA in lane seven, Akani Sambine of South Africa in lane eight, and Sylvan Vicky of the host nation in lane nine. Now, I think lane uh, one and nine are probably add-ins because you do get a certain number at each one of these diamond leagues that the host nation says, hey, we can add in somebody else. And I think definitely lane number nine, if you're looking at the times and everything, it just kind of matches up like that. But hey, this is still good. Congratulations to everybody that made the final. So what you guys came here to see is my analysis on uh, Fred Curley and Andre DeGrasse. So this one is going to be a tough one to call. Obviously, Andre DeGrasse, uh, uh, Fred Curley finished ahead of Andre DeGrasse at the Olympic 100 meter final, right? And I think with his ability of what uh, he's been putting forth with this 984, he's going to have a slight advantage here. He's been doing pretty good. He's got a new uh, PR in the 200. Uh, he's said he has his sights uh, set out for the 100, 200, and 400 that he can medal in all of them. He's looking to be a, a sprint legend. So he's doing it the right way, I would say. He's doing it the right way. He's getting medals. Um, I would say, I think he has his sights set on the 400 world record, like he said. So what does that have to do with the 100? Well, Andre DeGrasse is more of a 100, 200 athlete. And he's coming off the high, right? He's coming off the high of the Olympic 200 meters where he won at that. It's like he finally won at that. And it's not like he was any slouch. I mean, when you're competing against Usain Bolt year after year after year, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to actually get a win. It's like wrong time, wrong place, you know, but Usain Bolt isn't here anymore. So Andre DeGrasse gets his time to shine at the Olympics. He wins the Olympic gold in a 200. I think the psychological boost, because a lot of times we see somebody come off of a win from the Olympics and it's like uh, strength to strength. So I think Andre DeGrasse has an advantage from that. We can't count out uh, Ronnie Baker and we can't count out, um, Trayvon Bromel completely I don't want to count him out completely but I I kind of am not confident that he even features in this race a lot of people in the comment section when I was doing my live stream recap they were thinking that he's going to get fourth uh why did I click him by accident uh but I think that maybe Ronnie Baker gets here this is what I think is going to happen lane positioning so uh Bromel is going to get out hard against the grass I think that that is more likely to happen in more so obvious. That's going to drag DeGrasse there. Uh, Curly is next to Baker. While he might start faster than Curly, um, 
I think DeGrasse is going to be dragged through more than Curly could be dragged through with DeGrasse, if you get what I'm saying. But definitely the, the athletes that are going to feature, if they feature at all, will be lane four to seven. And I'm going to give this win to Andre DeGrasse due to, um, due to his win and the psychological uh, thing that happens when you get into a winning mode. You get what I'm saying? You get into a winning mode, and that takes you strength to strength. That's what I'm thinking. Fred Curley, he's, uh, he still looks like he's a 400 runner running uh, the 100. But even though he looks like a 400 runner running the, four, the 100, he's running pretty fast, and it's good enough for him to get a, a silver medal at the Olympics. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to give it to Andre DeGrasse, and obviously – this is a hard one. This is a very, very difficult one. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me go back to uh, the previous screen. Oh, yeah. And also the meet record by Johan Blake. Let's not forget this. 976. Do you guys think that goes down? I don't think it goes down today or, or tomorrow. I don't think that goes down at all. Um, nope, not at all. So let's go back if it actually listens this time. And let's go over to the women's triple jump. Then we're going to cover the women's 800. Where is that triple jump? I think I just passed it. Here we go. Now, uh, in the women's triple jump, do we think that this meet record is going to go down by uh, Anna Buryakova? Uh, oh, my goodness. I can't pronounce her name from Russia. Anna from Russia. Okay. <laughs> I should know how to pronounce her name. Uh, that's a little bit embarrassing. I'm not going to re-record this. Uh, but do you think it's going to go down? Here's your field. We got uh, Thea Lafon, Hannah Menenko, Kimberly Williams, Shanika Ricketts, Patricia Mamona, and Yulema Rojas. That's your uh, final six athletes in here. Obviously, world record holder, Olympic champion, Yulema Rojas is here from Venezuela. And I think it's an easy one to call that she's going to win. The question is, is she going to get over 15.03? And I think that's probably a resounding yes. It, I, I think that she's going to get, it's going to be like a sneeze and she could still mess up. Her PR is so much better than everybody else in the field. The only one that I think could really challenge her is not here because she's injured and Father Time is kind of caught up with her. Uh, Katerin Ibarguin, which is one of the four athletes that have, been able to win the uh, Diamond League finals in two events. Allison Felix was one. Remember the two and the four? Uh, uh, my, Lyles, Noah Lyles. Oh, my goodness. I, I had a brain fart there. Noah Lyles had uh, the other win with the one and the two, if I'm not mistaken. And then Katerin and Bargwin with the triple jump and I believe high jump, but it could have been long jump there. But I, most likely high jump because that was one of her better events, too. But here, Rojas, I think that she's going to take this and she's going to obliterate this record right here. I think she gets it in about 15-3 to 15-2. That's about where she, uh, I see her average is at. Now, this is going to be a competition for second place. Who do I think is going to get second place? Oh, that's, uh, that is a close one. It depends on how the day was. If it goes like the uh, shot put competition, there were a lot of surprises where I thought people underperformed. It was crazy. It was crazy in the women's shot put. A lot of uh, athletes underperformed. And so here, I think Mamona should have it because she's a consistent champion performer. And this is a champion uh, championship. Although it's the Diamond League, think of this as uh, the Olympics is like the World Cup or something, or the Olympics, and the World Championships are like the Olympics. But then in soccer or in basketball, you got the NBA Finals. This is for track and field. These are like the NBA Finals for track and field. These are like the uh, Premier League or something like that, the championships for the track and field. Think of it like that. Because a lot of people are like, oh, no, yeah, sure, everybody's not going to be there because of Premier League, everybody doesn't qualify, Right. So here, I think Mamona, she's a championship performer, but I can't count out uh, Ricketts at all. She's going to uh, feature. She's going to have to feature. And if she can bring out some of her best jumps, she might actually play second. That's what I'm going to say here. But I think easy win destroys the meat record. And there you go.
Now, the women's 800, this is going to be an interesting one. Here we go. Women's 800. Will Jamaica get this? So let's go first to the meet record. It's uh, Pamela Jalimo, 154.01. Oh, my goodness. I think, what is that, the second fastest time in history? I think that's pretty safe uh, if we have to say anything. And that was set in uh, 2008. So here's your field. Katriona Bassett of Australia, uh, Elamu, Ricky. That's I'm just going to read their last names here. Uh, Bissett, Elamu or Alamu, Ricky, Grace, Lind, Ghoul, Nakayi or Nakayi, Hodgkinson, Hoffman. And here's our pace seller, setter, Noeli Yarigo, which I'm not familiar with this one. I'm, I'm usually familiar with most pace setters. So who do I think is going to get this? This is if Natoya Gould could run her own race, she wins this. If not, then it's going to go to um, uh, Keely Hodgkinson. I think she's going to have it. Everybody else is going to be racing for second. Those two, I think they can come away with the win here. As far as who gets second place, Gemma Ricky just had a new PR over the weekend in the 1,000. So that's going to show her strength. And that's going to come into play later on at the end of the race when everybody's slowing down who slows down the least right kate grace she's been a great talent from the usa i think she's gonna feature uh she might even come away to steal it if they aren't paying attention if the race is slow enough it's got to be slow enough for them but if natoya Gould runs her own race that means she goes out in the lead if she goes out in the lead and she's able to push the uh the pace and she doesn't become an unwitting pace setter uh, back when it's about on the back straightaway with 250 meters to go, uh, she's going to have to push it and she's going to have to run some of the strength and maybe the speed of Hodgkinson out of her legs. I think that's the only way that she's going to come away with this win. If she tries to sit and kick, uh, unless it's a particularly slow pace, and if it's a slow pace, then it opens the door up for virtually anybody here and it's going to come down to almost their natural foot speed uh, over that last back straightaway. But if she runs her own race, she goes out into the lead like she knows how to do, I think she can take it. But she might be looking at the people on paper and her coach, and they say, well, 155 to your 156 here, uh, she might have you beat. And so you're going to have to serve it back and try a different strategy. And I think that might be the case here. She might try to di uh, a different strategy. But I think there is a Jamaican contingency to win in this. What do you guys think about all of these events? Um, as far as the ones that I covered here, do you think Jamaica can win in this? Let just give your unbiased opinion. I know a lot of the crowd is Jamaican, right? But give your unbiased opinion as much as possible. I know you want to say Jamaica, Jamaica. If you want to say it like, look, I really want Jamaica to win and I'm still pro Jamaican no matter what, but I think there is a chance that Hodgkinson can win or Halima Nakai of Uganda can win or Kate Grace or Jim Ricky. Like, Jim Mariki is a tough cookie. Don't count her out, especially after what she did over this weekend. The uh, the Brits in this race and their teammates here uh, from the same country, at least. I don't know if they're training partners, but their teammates, uh, that might come into play uh, in this Diamond League final. Remember, they're racing for $30,000 and an automatic bid next year at the World Championships. So that's a big deal, especially with that automatic bid. So catch you all on the next one. Thank you for coming out. You've been watching Head & Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest.